my mom apparently talked to Jennifer Fischel, <gasps> and the two of them decided that they should be on the show. And I was oh, like, that's serious? actually an amazing idea. That's a great I idea. <laughs> Wait, we because we've already talked about your mom so much. I mean, I don't know. It might get awkward. I, I, I you know. I don't know, but it was like, I didn't even think about it. I, I guess I never thought I would put my mom in, in that position, but she brought it up. She's like, we I, thought we should go I know. on. I actually would never have thought of it because my mom normally says no to anything that involves her having to be in the public at all. She's like, oh, right. no. Um, so we could do a mom's episode, maybe around Mother's Day next year. I think that That's would be a really awesome. great idea. I also, we came up with an idea downstairs that my parents and I were, were laughing our asses off where just halfway through the podcast without ever mentioning it, my mom and dad were going to just start wandering behind me with their canes and walkers and <laughs> in we the, weren't in the even, no one was going to say anything they were just going to just be wandering in the background <laughs> just out of camera then back over camera we were just laughing hysterically <sighs> it was so funny speaking of will where where are you right now where am i yeah where are you in this present moment i am right now in my childhood bedroom in <laughs> connecticut <laughs> doing a podcast with my sitcom mates from the 90s like you do on a normal Tuesday morning. Yes, listener, there is a Dark Side of the Moon poster behind there him. There sure is. So this is your actual childhood bedroom, this right? This is like, my this actual is... childhood bedroom. Not okay. my, it's it's like a shrine, essentially. Oh my Is that gosh. a hockey stick, too? I was it just going to say, that there's is, a hockey stick. <laughs> that is the, the Hartford, Connecticut, where I'm from, had one thing that was cool, which was the Hartford Whalers. Uh, which was so that's Dave Tippett's hockey stick, who was a Hartford Whaler. They were the worst hockey team ever. It was like the Mighty Ducks, if the Mighty Ducks were even worse. <laughs> um, and then they uh, they left and became the Car- Carolina Hurricanes, and like two years later, won the Stanley Cup. Uh, so it was one of those. <laughs> it was things a Hartford everyone, curse. <laughs> it was. It was like, are you kidding me? So uh, yes, if I turn the camera the other way, it is a wall of Marilyn Monroe. And I'm oh when I mean gosh. a wall, I mean like if she you was had a alive, wall of Marilyn Monroe. Oh man, if she was alive, the police would be visiting because they'd be like, all right, there's been weird letters being sent. Like yes, I had a, a thin a bit of a thing for Marilyn growing <laughs> so you up. Just, oh my god, that's fun. I never knew that. I didn't and know that. Either. Did you have cars on your wall? Did you have like you must there's have had cars like cars a... there? So over here, there's the Thunderbird over here, and oh then the other gosh. side is all um, <laughs> every, every street signs that my brother had stolen. Just out of yes. curiosity, why didn't your parents, when you moved out, by the way, when you were like 15, right. why didn't they immediately change your room into something else like my parents did? Because they rightfully <laughs> worship me. And it needs to be kept exactly as is for every time I still come home. So he comes home to do his podcast about the show that he started when he was 16. With his childhood Isn't that the normal way of things? So welcome to Connecticut. Yes, I can't believe it. In your childhood home. Uh, Well, what a a week it's been um, since our last episode with uh, David Trainer, And we got to meet Topanga. (laughs) Finally. I'm not sure the episode where we meet Topanga, I was expecting to have so much um, so much heaviness. feelings. Yeah, so many, so many feelings. Too much feelings. Too much feelings. <laughs> That's a new T-shirt. Uh, a new t-shirt. t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, I definitely had a lot of unpacking after that episode. Were you uh, okay? Were you okay after that, after we talked? I mean, were you, did you walk away feeling all right about the conversation we had or were, was there a lot more kind of going on? No, I did. I what I'll say is that I think it was the closest feeling I've ever had to a little bit of an out of body experience where I felt a little disassociated from everything we had talked about and I was processing everything and um I don't know. I I said to my husband, I said to Jensen that it was weird because you know, we have talked about this podcast as being a place where one, we're going to be honest, and two, we want all of our guests to feel perfectly comfortable sharing any and all of their experiences, whether they're positive, whether they're negative. And that's part of the interesting journey of this for all of us is trying to figure out um, what the experience of Boy Meets World was for not only us, but for everyone else that was a part of the show. You know, the other thing I said at the very beginning of this starting the podcast is that I my only concern was that some of our honesty might change the way people feel about the show. And that that would make me really sad. And so I think one of the things that's important for me to say after those wonderful episodes with David, where they were maybe some of our heaviest episodes yet, or maybe our heavy, definitely our heaviest episodes yet, is that, as I've said many times, Boy Meets World, especially the first couple of seasons, was an absolute joy of my life. And I right. just wanted to be there every single day. And so even though now I can look back on it 
with adult eyes and um, the eyes of a parent and all of the in 2022 eyes. And I can say, wow, maybe some of that wasn't the way it should have gone. Um, <laughs> it didn't ch- change the fact that while I was there, I was I was really happy and I loved it. I think what was funny about for me, like listening to you tell the story um, last week was that I was imagining that you've told the story a bunch, right? I mean, this is sort of your, the Topanga origin story. Yeah. And yet it was suddenly kind of different, you know? It was yeah. like the narrative was changing while you were telling it because you've suddenly had another person's per- point of view. And, it, and I think that having to revise those narratives that we've told ourselves or that we've told other people for years is super scary. It's important sometimes, you know, and, and I, I, I think it's great. I think it's yeah. great. And I don't think that it does takes away from the original narrative. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's just now, now you're 40. And so yeah. the story of that you had told all your life from 12 to 39 was, you know, it might be a little different now. And that's, I think that that's really healthy and that's great. Um, and I think that there's going to be a lot of that for yeah. me during, during this experience, you know, because I've been, you know, for instance, I think, I think we talked about when we first started, I, I think I, I've always been telling myself a somewhat negative story about my experience on Boy Meets World, you know, because for me, I was a very unhappy kid. I had all these sort of pressures I was putting on myself. And now I'm looking back and, you know, kind of revising them and being like, oh, my God, this was fun. I was having fun. I was laughing. I was meeting these amazing people. And so, like, you know, we're going to keep we're going to keep doing that. It's going to keep yeah. fluctuating, going in different ways. And and also we'll do it again when we're 60. We'll yeah. do it again when we're 80. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's what's going to be, be fun. different then. Yeah, and exactly. Then you'll, you'll go through all these, you know, kind of different phases in your life. And as we're re, you know, every time you look back, you're looking back with, uh, you know, wiser than you were yesterday. So it's going to change your perspective. And I also think to what you said, Danielle, where we don't want to ruin kind of anybody's experience with Boy Meets World. um, I think it's okay that people understand that it's two things that Boy Meets World, the show Boy Meets World can always be the show Boy Meets World, but there were real people making the show. And we had our own experiences as we were making this wonderful thing for people. But the show itself it's still this wonderful, happy place that brings back all the feelings. And I don't think, again, I always talk about this. I'm not going to like MASH less because I know a lot of, as a super fan of MASH, I grab all the books. I read all the books. I want to know about the making of. I want to know the audition process. I want to know all that stuff. So I, I think the super fans that are listening to the show and all the fans listening to the show, I think it's going to enhance the experience of watching Boy Meets World more than anything else, that they know kind of some of the stuff we were going through and the process of everything going on. That's the feedback I've gotten most, especially from the first episode, which I, I think if memory serves, so the idea of the show was Betsy's and then the idea... <laughs> Um, of, of talking about the process of making the show was yours, Danielle. Right. That's right. And I, and, and that's one of the creative (sighs) Mm -hmm. things I'm getting most from people. One of the, the, the feedback, the the most feedback I'm getting is I love the first episode where you talked about the actual process of making (laughs) the show. Yeah. So I think that behind the scenes stuff is, uh, people are going to love and got just once again, thank you, Betsy Randall, because the idea has been awesome. And yeah, thank God for Betsy Randall coming on with this, with this podcast. (laughs) So, um, in happier news, I cannot wait to get my too much shirts. I know, yeah. me neither. Me neither. I am going to rock not, that. It's so funny because we we ha- we used to get uh, cast and crew coats every year. That was like <laughs> so they would be. I call them jackets more than jackets. coats. Yeah. Okay, sure, but they, there were also years where there were robes. I don't know if there were there were oh, robe yeah. years too. Sure. Anyway, every year, every season of Boy Meets World, the the producers would would get together and, or the network, I don't know who did this, but they would custom order jackets in whatever size you wanted that had like big Boy Meets World logos. These things are probably huge collector's items and they would have your name engraved on them and we could never wear them because they would like have our face on them or they would just say Boy Meets World so loudly. It it would seem, we had the feeling that if we wore it out, it was like we were begging for attention. Attention, yes. But I can wear too much shirts out. I feel feel very comfortable wearing too much shirts because it's like, it's one of those, if you know, you know kind of shirts. It doesn't declare um, like the show I was on. I want to show you you all something that is, um, I'm going to have to um, unthumbtack it from my wall, but I imagine it has been stuck on my wall since 1993. So hang on. Do you have the navy blue Boy Meets World robe? I don't know where mine went, but when you said robes. I have it, but what I actually have on the wall here is our invite Saturday, March 6, 1994 uh, at the Renaissance restaurant and nightclub we are celebrating the first season wrap wow. of Boy Meets World. So there's the original invite to our first I season wrap I mean, party at I remember, the Renaissance. 
I remember mm. our holiday party very vividly, and we could talk about that maybe some other time. But I don't remember the rap party. I don't know if I went to the rap party at the end of the first season. I'm sure you did. You must have. You must have. I don't know. Have. I would have bailed if, if it was after the season ended. Yeah, if it was I like days later, home. you might have just yeah, gone I would have gone home to go to school and oh, finish maybe, out the yeah. year. So, you know, and I don't know if my parents would have been like, it's really important you go to this party. You know, no, your parents would have let you. Did you go to those ABC parties at the beginning of every season? Yes. Those were yeah. fun. Those there were, were somewhere it was just like me place. and Tony. I remember... <laughs> Yes. But those were fun because they would always be all the shows. You'd get to meet all yeah. the, the actors from other shows. Yeah. But it was also at like the La Brea Tar Pits or some, some yeah. kind of cool place where it was like, man, this is awesome. Yeah, I remember really- that's what the first place I ever met Melissa Joan Hart was at one of those parties. Yeah. So get your Too Much Shirt shirt or whatever other merch you want at podmeetsworldshow.com. And I'm really excited about our guest today. Well, oh, first yeah. of all, welcome to Pod Meets World. <laughs> I'm Danielle Fischel. I'm Ryder Strong. And I'm Will Friedell. I'm super excited about our guest today, and I know that you both are as well, and even more so than us, our listeners are going to be ecstatic about this guest because he is definitely one of our most requested, um, and he's just one of our favorites. So Lee Norris is from North Carolina. He is best known for his role as Stuart Minkus on Boy Meets World, but that may not even be true. Maybe he's best known for One Tree Hill. He is a very talented actor. By the way, he's in two David Fincher movies. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. So I can't wait to talk to him about that. Um, But he reprised his role as Minkus on Girl Meets World. He was in 23 episodes of Boy Meets World, which I also can't wait to talk to him about because I feel like he was in every episode. He's so memorable. It's shocking to me that it ended up only being 23 episodes. Episodes. Um, And Lee has a son who is about the same age or close to the same age as Adler. He had a son born in 2019. So I'm really excited to. to, I didn't either. I just found it out. I'm so (laughs) excited to talk to him about that, too. So please join me in welcoming Lee Norris. Hey, Hi, everybody. Hey. Wow. Hi, friends. How oh are God. you? Good. I am so, good so to see you. excited to see you. I we mean, have I... been waiting for this forever. You have no <laughs> idea. Can you believe we are, I, we're 40 somethings talking about when we were 12? <laughs> yep. <laughs> no. We're still getting used to it. <laughs> I know. It's so weird. Oh, oh my gosh. I, well, you I, all look good. That's yeah, all that matters. You do too, so. man. Thanks, so buddy. do you. <laughs> you look incredible. Wait, I want to talk to you. So you're married and you have yeah. a son who was born when in 2019? I do. Yeah. He was born in October. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So oh my, my gosh. son Adler was born in June of 2019. And congratulations. So have, thank oh you. We, we the have, next generation. Exactly. They're, they're going to do their own podcast. Guys, let's start a show. Uh, yeah, right. exactly. Let's start a show. Exactly. There's a nerd. And then there's a, a hairy kid. And... <laughs> Indy will for sure be the leader of that group because absolutely Indy's definitely going to be like, okay, let's put this all together. And then he's going (laughs) to tell everybody what their roles are. Yeah, I'm excited for that, actually. I think we should get that going. So, Lee, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. I'm so glad you guys are doing this. This is awesome. Yeah, we've had a lot of uh, a lot of really good conversations. I don't know if you've had a chance to listen to any of the episodes. I have. You better believe, you know, I always do my homework. Come on. (laughs) I am not surprised at all that you do your homework. That's awesome. So, you know what we do here. You know how we are, you know, we're very honest and we like to to get down into it. So why don't you take us back to the beginning? How did you, as a young boy in North Carolina, decide that you wanted to be an actor? What is your origin story? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm just one of those weird kids. It was never my you. You guys met my mom and and my dad. It was never them pulling me into it. It was it was the other way around. I watched the Cosby Show and those shows with kids on it, and just said, "Why well, can't I be like those kids? I want to be on TV." And you know, God bless my parents for trying to get me involved in theater and not just laughing at me. You know, they they <laughs> they explained that you know typically back then at least you had to typically live in L.A. or New York. Um, but there were, you know, film studios in North Carolina, um, Dino De Laurentiis years before that had built studios there, um, to film Firestarter and some other things. So because of those awesome movie, yeah, great movie. Um, so because of that, there actually, there actually was like a local agent who lived nearby and I was able to meet with her and start going out, you know, mostly for things that were coming to North Carolina to film. But occasionally there would be, you know, national searches for things. And 
like my third or fourth audition was a national search um, for a show called The Torkelsons, which oh, yes. our very own Michael Jacobs was, you know, um, looking for Southern kids. And I was a Southern kid. So wow. I, uh, I put myself uh, on tape on the old VHS, you know, tapes <laughs> and did the audition, sent it off, forgot about it. Like two weeks later, we were on our way to Disney World in Florida for Easter vacation. And we got a call saying, we're flying you out to LA to meet with Michael and then have a screen test for NBC. And my parents are just like, what is happening? So, you know, we, we go to, we go to LA. You guys will appreciate this. I meet with Michael first, just Michael and I, I do the scenes exactly the way I did them on the tape. And he's like, that was terrible. We got it. We got to figure this out. And I'm like, Oh my God, what happened? Um, I did it the same way, you know, and he's, he was trying to explain to me as if I was maybe eight or nine, like the nuance of acting for television. Cause up until this point, I'd done like children's theater, which is, you know, all right. over the top. Right. Um, so he's trying to explain that to me and, you know, I'm trying to, to take the notes and internalize it as best I can. I tell my parents, I'm like, this, this may not go well. We go over to NBC. I'm sitting in this waiting room full of kids who are there to screen test. They find out I'm Anna and they're all like freaked out that I've been flown in. And they're of course all like yeah. pro child actors, you know, you you know, this writer. At, yeah. Well, all, it's also, I, I, we talked about this, like, you know, Will was the guy from yeah. New York. You were the guy <laughs> from right. North Carolina. It's always That's an right. intimidating yeah. position. I love it. Exactly. <laughs> but there were, there were already these like mind games going on. Yes. Like this kid who was oh, sitting next God. to me of the room and says really over the, got it. And of course I just immediately thought he was, you know, telling the truth. And I was like, well, this has been a great trip to LA. I guess I'm not going to get it, you know? Um, and oh, God, and God bless Jason Marsden. No, it wasn't. I knew Jason. Jason, <laughs> I know, you know, I know. It, you it, it was a spinoff with Jason. Yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, I, I went in and I, I did the best I could and, um, you know, it, it, it worked out and God bless my parents for just, you know, kind of resetting me and saying, you've come this far and that's a win. Whatever happens from here is, is, icing on the cake. And so, you know, I was able to relax and do it, but so started my journey with TV and Michael and the Torkelsons It we did almost home with Jason and uh, Brittany Murphy, who obviously we miss. And um, you know, I, that ended and I thought that might be it until I got a, a phone call one day and said, you know, come out to LA. We can't find anybody to play this kid, Minkus. It's Michael on the phone. He says, I think you'd be perfect. And I guess now I should be insulted that he thought I was perfect. But... <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Not no. at all. No. I also think uh, t at, the at the beginning, wasn't it Lemke? Wasn't Stuart it Lemke? Was. Lemke? It was. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. yeah. Now, I'm, and... I'm sorry. I have to go back because I have been triggered. <laughs> so... Oh, no. <laughs> Hearing Lee say that he flew you out here after doing your audition and then told you everything you were doing was wrong yep. and he wanted you to do it differently. Yep. How different would you say your screen test performance ended up being from yeah. the te from the way you did it on the VHS? And yeah, how, what was that? How, how was that? I, what what I, was your original I, performance and what did Michael want? I really have no idea. It was such an out of body experience. I mean, mm -hmm. really, it was all I could do to just get in the room. I remember there was like 40 executives in there and I had been raised as a little Southern kid, like manners were a big deal. So I tried to go around the room shaking everybody's hand. Of course, all the executives. <laughs> yeah. And they were like 35 minutes later. <laughs> yeah. They're like, you've got to do the audition. You can't shake everybody's hand. You know, and I'm like, oh, I'm that, that probably got you the part right there. I, That's I <laughs> honestly, I honestly think that had yes. as much to do with it as the read, if I'm being honest. Um, but, oh, you know, so I just cute. tried, to, I, tr Danielle, to, I tried to bring it down. I tried to take his notes. I would say it was mostly probably the same, but, you know, some of the things that I, hit harder i tried to soften and you know yeah but I, I i guarantee you that it was so it was just as much what happened in the room as it was the room wow so. michael gave you notes weird I, right <laughs> i would have thought <laughs> what are the chances so how long did the torkelsons go for was it one full season or two it was or? one one full season they put us on after the golden girls which was an interesting time slot wow, um, wow. and then they like moved us against 60 minutes so we got clobbered um wow. and so then they tried to retool it and they brought in jason and Britt and perry king and um you know we lost some of our siblings and it was just a different show <laughs> and as happens that was my, that was my uh, yeah. first ever los angeles screen test was for almost was, home was it really i didn't know it that was, will it was between wow. myself and jason and shiloh 
Mm-hmm. Wow. My brother, for all, yeah. Ryder's older That's brother for, for Almost Home. And Jason, the first time I met my one of my best friends in the world, Jason Marsden, we were yep. on an elevator and Perry King got on yeah. the elevator and I turned to my dad and I went, dad, Riptide, because that was the show he was on. <laughs> and it was the coolest show in the world. It was, it was an 80s show where there's this boat and it was just called Riptide. And Jason turned to me and went, Riptide. Like he was like making fun of me and made fun oh, of me no. for years oh about gosh. being the guy that was like, dad, Riptide. Like he was always making fun of me because I, Jason <laughs> was jaded by this point. He's like 16 and had been in the but business for 17 on. Jason years. Jason was probably the most excited about meeting somebody oh, famous. No, like Jason was, is yeah. like. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But he gave me, he did. He made fun of me for years that I pointed out Perry King to my dad, like Riptide. And he just would always say, Riptide. Like he thought he was, oh, who, yeah, I'll smack God. him next time. So I see when him. Michael, yeah. when Michael called you for Boy Meets World, did you end yeah. up even needing to audition or did you just, he just put you in? No. So that, that was the best thing that, you know, <gasps> I think I even answered the phone at my house and, and it was Michael and he was like, how would you like to come to LA and do this great part? And oh, so I was like, a, yeah, that's the dream as an actor to not have yeah. to audition. Yeah. Oh um, and, but the you only bad it, news, kid. yeah, <laughs> but the only bad news was that it was like two, it was like two days later that the first table read was happening. And so, and they said to me that they'd been looking everywhere and they hadn't been able to find anybody to play this kid. And so I was, I got on the plane with my mom, literally the script had been FedEx to me, you know, way pre email yeah. had been FedEx to me. And I was reading it on the plane, highlighting the lines. And it suddenly became a very stressful experience because I realized that, you know, I had never said these lines before to a casting director, to Michael. And even though they had given me this part, quote unquote, I knew if I didn't get it right, that I would be back on the plane headed back to North Carolina very quickly because, wow. you know, I knew Michael and I know he expects it to be funny. And so um, I was a bit stressed going into the table read. We landed, went right into the table read. And I said that first line, which was, am I misremembering? Was Killer B the first episode that we no, did? No, you are not misremembering. Okay. This is the first one okay. that we did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, as I was watching the episode, I remembered like saying that first line at the table read. And I say that, ow, when I get hit in the back of the head mm-hmm. and it got a huge laugh. And as soon as I got that laugh, I just, oh, and I was like, I okay, I can do this. I can do this. Yeah. So I think only you and Bill Daniels were offered the role on Boy Meets World. Everybody else, I think, had to audition, but Lee mm-hmm. Norris and, oh, and Ben Savage. And, 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 and Ben Savage. <laughs> and Ben Savage. Who right, did the exactly. show around Ben? Yeah, yeah. Who they but, both yeah. the show around. Exactly. But that's pretty, exactly. pretty good company to be in. Good company. I'll take it. I'll and take so it for sure. you, you know, we have talked on this show a lot about the death chair. And that there was that death chair. Uh, You having already been on the Torkelsons with Michael, did you already know of the version of the death chair from the Torkelsons? Like had you, cause you had already kind of seen that happen. I did. Well, I mean, I lost two siblings, so I saw, you know, I saw things happen, but. um, May they rest in peace. (laughs) This this is so And they were wonderful. Yeah. You know, and then I and then I had my own my own dance with sort of the death chair later. So I mean, I understood it was a business. Like I I knew what was going on. Um, but Michael was uh, he look he changed my life. I mean, he he gave me that opportunity on the Torkelsons, and he brought me back to Boy Meets World. And um, you know, I was just a, a kid from North Carolina. You could still hear the accent come through, and I was yeah. you know, was certainly not winning any Emmys. We were finding our way, but he, he just he recognized, I think, my instincts and he knew how to talk to me and and get me to where he wanted me to be. And and it was always funny. So, you know, oh. I, I I'm grateful to her. No, so Lee, sure. we we have been yeah. marveling oh, at your performance. You are so good. It is so good. Is I mean, so good. You arrive fully formed as a character. It's it, it could so easily be like a cliche, and you just manage to imbue it with such humanity. It's so funny. Oh. You're so sweet, and yet, you know, like it's just great, man. It's it, you oh, are truly, you, and you writer. you you have such a. I mean, I said this when we first you you arrive as as an amazing comedian act comedian yeah. actor. Yeah, and like I feel like the rest of us are kind of flailing around, and I can no. also. It's so funny. I can hear you know like there are times when I could see Ben, and I remember like 
him kind of not knowing what he was doing, which is also part of Corey, right? But like with you, you are so confident and in mm -hmm. control of every scene you're in and with every actor that you're up against, it is wonderful to watch. And, and uh. you're just like this tiny little kid. It's so I know. cute, man. It's but you are, you're so, you're so comfortable in your skin. Your, yes. your, even your physicality is very like commanding, even mm -hmm. though you are a small, you were a small child, you have a commanding presence. You are so in your skin and so yes. sure of yourself. Yeah. Uh, it is, you are just such a delight to watch in every episode. When you well, are in that, the episodes, yeah. I cannot take my eyes off you. The the thing that amazed me, especially about this first episode about Killer, the one we were just talking about, Killer Bees, which we we are watching, well, we're watching in order, but we shot out of order. So this is right. the first time that we actually were together. If you didn't know anything about Boy Meets World, you could easily think that you were the star of this show. Yeah. <laughs> that oh my the gosh. show so, was oh. built around Minkus and no. the an antagonist like, at least, right? It's like Corey versus Minkus. Yeah. Like this totally. is what the show is about and this is going to be what it's like I, I was just sitting there watching it going like oh he easily could have been the star of the show well um, thank god i thank god i wasn't is all i have to say because i mean major props and respect to ben i mean to, oh, I, yeah. I was just i marveled at his ability to carry the show it was incredible yeah. and i'm, we glad, are too, I'm yeah. glad that i wasn't at the center because i frankly i don't know how he did it and and you to you all i mean this is really high praise coming from you guys because I'm going back and watching it. And of course I'm cringing at some of the things I'm doing, but Ryder, you were so natural and Will, you're just hysterical. And and Danielle, without you being there, I was like, this show was terrible. Where is she? So, <laughs> you know, I, I, it's, it's so I, true. The, the feeling of love is is mutual. And I, you know, I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's, but it's you were really just, kind. my God, the natural talent was yeah. was there from this and again we talk about this all the time we're, we're as the writer said we're just trying to find ourselves especially like eric yeah. really didn't have a character topanga was supposed to be on one episode writer had like a line or two we're just trying to figure out what we're doing what we're there and then minkus comes in it's like oh i get him right away like you knew yeah. minkus yeah. right away well i and love it was awesome. that that Minkus is the quote unquote nerd character. But my favorite part of you as the, as the character is that you didn't take ish from anybody. Like <laughs> no. you, yeah. you were the first person to have a comeback so and to tough. have a response. And I just, uh, how did you in like, what to, well, who is Minkus to you? What, what, yeah. how did you think of him? I never thought, of course, I never thought of him as a nerd. I thought of him as a kid who had um, great parents who loved him and told him he was, kid on the block, you know, like that he, and not that he was better than anybody else, but just that he was just as good as anyone else, you know, mm. and that, um, that his thing that he loved was, was, was learning, you know, that he, he loved to learn. And I ha share that in common with him. I am not, not nearly as smart as he was at all. Um, <laughs> but I certainly could relate to that. And I also could relate to, um, not necessarily being the most popular kid in school, but but feeling good about who I was and that I, I that I've kind of floated between different groups and I loved everybody. And and so I sort of it let that confidence infuse him because I think the last thing anybody wanted to watch was, you know, a nerd get hit in the back of the head and then feel really sorry for himself. You know what I mean? Nobody. I think everybody just wanted to, you know, loved him because he was a likable guy who just did his thing and and knew he was going to find his way. So that's that's, you know, how I played him. We've yeah. talked a little bit about um, a real little bit about what our experience was before starting Boy Meets World. Ryder had already had quite a bit of acting experience, had already been on a show. He was a little jaded already going into Boy Meets World. Uh, Will's entire life, all he wanted was to be on a sitcom. So this was a dream come true for him. And yeah. I had literally done nothing except a, like a few commercials and what two episodes of full house. So I was very, very new. What was your, do you remember your first impression of all of us? The first time you met us, you had, you were very experienced having already been on two other shows that had been successful well, in their own right. And, but, and yet I was intimidated because, you know, again, I had been told similarly, Danielle, one or two episodes tops. Uh, I, I was not expecting to be there. Uh, oh, is that true? Beyond, you weren't you weren't yeah. immediately hired as a regular, huh? You're, no. you're in the oh, opening. But you're in the credits. opening credits. You're in the opening title yeah, credits. I know that that came later. So we we filmed oh, those wow. first two episodes, and during and the got filming picked. of the second episode, they started coming to my mom and saying, "We we want to talk about making him a, a regular." Wow, wow. So that must have felt so good. Oh my god, what a cool. great no, it felt, feeling! It felt great. Um, and and so um, because of that, I just came in meeting everybody, not knowing that, you know, I would get to form any really deep relationships, but 
I just remember Ben was very kind and again, sort of what just building on what I said, I was so taken aback of his day was scheduled. Like he was yeah. either on set or in school or doing an interview or something. And, and I, I just kind of marveled at that. And he was, he was very kind to me, which I appreciated. Uh, I was struck by how intellectual you were. I mean, you were just a smart guy and, you had your older brother and you were just mm -hmm. much more worldly than I was. And I just thought you were so cool. And, you know, I, I, I just was really impressed with you all together. And Will, I, I loved you right away. I felt like we had a very, um, maybe an East coast sensibility or kind of a vibe. I, not that Connecticut and North Carolina are, are the same, but you know, <laughs> still East just, coasters, uh, still yeah, East kind of, kind of an East coast thing close with your family. And, you know, just really, um, you were just such a nice guy and hysterical. And I remember we, you know, later would come to live at the Oakwood and I just, I will never forget as long as I live that huge earthquake I was hitting thinking the gosh. same thing. <laughs> I was thinking about the same story. Wait, the Northridge North quake? Yeah, yeah, the Northridge. Yeah. So it was the right North before Ridge? the fugitive the episode, the fugitive. And right. I was flying in. So I actually missed it because I was up north and I was flying in that day. But you guys were at the Oakwoods together, right? Yeah, yes. that's right. So my building was like just down the hill from Will's. And and I remember there was like a guard, there was like a guard gate to get on yeah. the, the property. And I'll never forget like coming back to work and hearing that like the guard at the Oakwood freaked out because Will and his roommate, <laughs> when we lost power, turned on their gas logs to try to <laughs> provide light in the apartment. And <laughs> The guard like <laughs> high tech to their apartment and like out of breath was like, turn your gas logs off. And we we were the no, East Coasters. We had no idea. We didn't you know? know we needed light. No. So there was an earthquake. Yeah. We had no power. Turn on gas <laughs> fire. That seems like the most appropriate thing to do. Oh and my there's gosh. two guards banging on our door yeah. holding fire extinguishers, thinking that the whole building is on fire. We're like, sorry, we didn't know. That's hysterical. <laughs> so do you guys, were you both woken up by the earthquake? Because it was oh, early yeah. in the morning. Oh, yeah. right? And then yeah. we were no, on it... the phone with each other. We were, remember your, right. your your mom and I, and we were all talking about like, all right, what do we do now? Like, yeah. what's what's the plan? We had no power. It's the so most we were like, sitting welcome in our to car. LA experience possible, yeah, right? Bet, what For was both this, of... like, the, like the third month we were there, something oh. like that? The second or third yeah. month we lived in Los Angeles? It was, it was quite a way to literally wake up in the morning. And so yeah. that earthquake was 1994. How yep. old were you, Lee, at the time? I was a, I think I was a turning 12. Uh, I'm not a math guy, wow. believe it or not. So <laughs> yeah, so I think yeah. you were, you yeah. were a little bit younger than all of us. Cause I, I was, yeah. I thought I was the youngest at 12. I think you were just slightly younger than me. I, I may have started, I was, I either started at 11 or started at 12. I don't okay. remember, but what year I, I want to say 12, I, 81. Was the okay. Year same, was so, same. Yes. What month? Okay. Oh, September. <laughs> okay. I was born in May. So I'm just a few okay. years older okay. than you. Okay. A few months, not a few right. years. Wow. Yeah. A few yeah. months older. Okay. Wow. And yeah. so, so, so that puts me two years or at least a year and a half older than you, which is right. significant right. at that age. Yeah. yeah. And, no, and for Ben sure. was somewhere yeah. in between too. Um, and I was old. Yeah. Ben is oh, I, ancient. <laughs> yeah. Ben is also in September of 81, right? I, I, he, I think he is. Yeah. I, I think he He's was. Yeah. I mean, his birthday is definitely I September 13th. That. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think remember it's 81. Was, close. was it 80? Was it's 80. 80. He's 80. He was 80, I 80. think. 80. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So a year, uh, well, a year older than I, I remembered feeling, you know, younger and then, <laughs> and to just continue on, Danielle, when you came in, I just, I was like, oh, this is my, this is my person. Like we had school together. We had the same teacher and yeah. you were just so friendly and your mom was the, and all of your I, moms, Will, I don't, I don't think I got to. To hang out with your yeah, parents. Yeah, my much, parents but, would pop in and out. Kind yeah, of thing, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. everybody's moms were so great. It was just a family, truly a family thing. It was, it was great. Yeah. yeah. I remember your mom very well. And I remember uh, her her beautiful accent. And yes. she <laughs> she called your dad Boogie. That's that was that's my dad's name. <laughs> that's yeah. so great. And yeah. she would say, she would say, Well, Boogie. And I just every time she'd say anything, I'd think I could listen to you read anything. Aww. Just so soothing and so sweet. And it was so obvious that your family was so close and you were so yeah. supported and loved. And um, you know, you did. You always you kind of made all of us in a, the nicest way. You weren't intentionally doing it, but you made all of us look bad because you did have no. such great manners. Oh, and yeah. you would say hell you would so be like polite. you were so polite yeah. and and so on top of it. You were so professional. And yeah, I mean, man, and I Lee, am I remembering correctly that you you could sing really well too? 
Uh, well, th- you're kind. I mean, I did sing. I don't, I wouldn't I say remember, really well, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I re- yeah. I mean, I remember that for some reason I have this I- indelible memory of you like singing on set or like yeah. talking about music all the time. Like I just remember yeah. being like, no, I did. I did like something. to sing. I did later in college. I was in an acapella group. I was never going to cut a record deal, but you know, I, I enjoyed it. So. Okay. I got to know because they always have the best names like chock full of notes. So what was your acapella group name? Yeah, of course. We were called Innuendo. And the reason we were called that is because we were the first co-ed acapella group on campus. So we were like the sketchy acapella kids that had <laughs> female and males in the same group in a, in a Southern college. So um, yes. yeah. I love it. I love so that. So let's talk about then you were on the first season. How many episodes yeah. do you know about how many episodes you did in the first season? What did what was the total number? Was it twenty two or you, something like that? Of the fir, of the first season, I think we did. There were twenty two. Yeah. I so I wasn't in the. Oh, was it? Okay, I can't um, remember. So I wasn't in the pilot, and I think there was like one other that I wasn't in where okay. they brought Rue McClanahan in and like they couldn't afford me that week or something. Oh yeah, that so, was that was uh, Grandma yeah. was a Rolling Stone. Yeah. Right. The, yeah, 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 yeah. So I didn't do those two, but I think. I think Everything I else. was in all the other, I think so. Okay. Actually, technically yeah, you yeah. were in all of them because even in the pilot, you're in the opening title sequence. So That's you true. see there's there Lee go. Norris right there. And then there are people yeah. who are like, wait, he wasn't on? Why he wasn't in the first episode? <laughs> so I want to get to what happened at the end yeah. of the first season and what, how, when, what was that conversation? How did you find out you weren't going to be in season two? And yeah. what was that dialogue? Because I've never known the story. Yeah, you know, you you all may know more than I do, to be honest with you. I mean, it 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 when I left, I left on good terms, feeling great about what the work we'd done. It felt like the show was doing well and I felt like I had contributed and done my part and nobody was coming up to me saying, you know, I'm not going to be back. Um so as far as I know, when I was saying goodbye to you guys, I just thought, well, I'll see you in a couple of months. Um and it wasn't right away, but I I you know, at some point again, I got a phone call at home and, um, it wasn't Michael. It was another one of the producers and they just said, we love Lee. He's done incredible, but we're, we're not bringing him back. And, um, and I think what I, what we were told, they didn't talk to me. They, um, what passed along to me was that, you know, friends was doing really well and that ABC wanted to age the show up and that, you know, I have this perpetual baby face or better or worse. And so that I just didn't old and continue on. And, and I, I certainly accepted that. Um, but it didn't, I didn't really understand it in my gut. It didn't necessarily feel like maybe the whole story and maybe it was, I don't know. Um, for, for anybody listening, what I would say is the best is sitting here as a 40 year old and, and knowing that honestly, it really doesn't even matter at this point. Like what, what the, the, the lesson that, that this taught me at a really young age is that, especially as an actor, because we all go through this, you can put your heart and soul into something, you know, do a, a pretty job and, and things can still not work out the way that you think because of any other number of circumstances or reasons that are beyond your control. And at 12, that was a hard thing to, to learn. I immediately, Jeez. of course, was like, well, what did I do wrong? It must have been something. Uh, you know, I'm, right. I'm, right. It's and, like your parents and, getting a divorce. You're like, you blame yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you just immediately think that you did <laughs> right. something. And, um, you know, it, it, it taught me a, a valuable lesson early. And I think anybody listening can identify with that, whether you're an actor or not, whether you're putting your all into a relationship or you work at a bank or whatever, there's things that happen and, and it just, there are things out of your control. All you so can control I, is what you do, you know? Yeah, I heard. <laughs> so I heard a story that yeah. I don't know if this is true or not, but this is the story that I heard. I heard that ABC, because the lead in was Family Matters uh-huh. and Family Matters, big breakout star who was also not starring on that did not start in the show was Julia sure. White as Urkel. Right. Of course, and so yeah. they did. ABC did not want to have two shows back to back that quote unquote featured a nerd. Was the story yeah. that I heard. And I heard that years after because I, I don't want to speak for Danielle and Ryder, but none sure. of us knew you weren't going to be on the seconds. Like, yeah. I don't think I, we yeah. all thought you were coming back. And then it was nobody calls and because we're we're kids. So nobody yeah. calls and says, we're going to change right. the show or this person's <laughs> not coming. You just show up at the table read and you look around, and you go, wait, where's Lee? Like, that's all exactly. yeah. I knew. Was no, I, told I, us anything. I, 
I heard different things. I, I think I heard a version of that. And then later when I came back to do Girl Meets World, you know, Michael took my wife and I out to dinner and we had a really lovely conversation. And I'm sure part of this was that he was trying to get me to do Girl Meets World. But, <laughs> what? You know, he Please was, come back. He was, <laughs> again, I would just say the best feeling is that ultimately Boy Meets World didn't need me. This show was, you guys were amazing. And, and, and. Luckily for me, um, you know, things worked out. I was able to go on and do other shows and move yeah. on with my life. And it, it just taught me so early on that your, your self-worth and your value cannot be wrapped up in being a, a kid actor or, or, it'll, yes. or it'll crush you, you know? Yes. And so I, I learned that really quickly. And I, I, you know, for better or worse, I'm glad that I learned it because it's helped me a lot yeah. over the course of my life. Yeah. Well, we missed you. We really did. Well, thanks. Yeah. Well, we found reasons to get back to you, so it's been good. Lee, <laughs> hold on. I want to jump in real quick. Lee, do you still get recognized yeah. for Minkus? Like when All you get time. recognized, is it mostly <laughs> Minkus even, or, or One Tree Hill? What, 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 which is... Uh, it's it depends on the age, but uh-huh. I, but I'll always get recognized for me because I two weeks ago I was running through the airport late for a flight, you know, doing the home alone dash through the airport, <laughs> and I hear someone yell, "Hold the plane for Minkus!" You know, as I'm like running, and you know, it's just That's I great. wanted to give him a peace sign on the way. I just you yeah. know, it, it will always be there, but oh. I'm I'm so. I'm so proud of it and I'm grateful, you know. I'm this- sorry. I need to call right now. Absolutely. Please bracket this. I need a hold the plane for Minkus shirt. I know. <laughs> so I'm making shirts for thing. everything I'm now. Sorry, I, but I, want go. One. I want one of those because that's plane. awesome. That's amazing. Oh, I love that. Okay, so I want to I want to jump back in and Lee, you don't have to answer this question if you don't want, but I have to ask. Sure. Michael called you with good news. <laughs> called you for the Torkelsons. <laughs> he called you to offer you Girl Meets World. Yeah. Did you ever hear from Michael after they decided to let you go after season 1? Yeah, I th- I think he called at some point. He wasn't the initial phone call, um, but yeah, no, he called and and good. And, you know, there was something about, we're going to find another show for you, you you know, and, you know, you just, sure you you just take it all in. And, you know, I just had to go back to school, get back into my routine. Of course, all my friends were watching Boy Meets World. So, you know, they're like, what, where are you, you know? Um, That must have been so hard. It was tough, but, you know, you just, you have to pick up and move on with your life. And, um, and now looking back, I'm just, I, I'm grateful that I got to be part of it, even if it was for a year. And then to come back and do the other stuff, it was it was really cool and interesting to come back and do the graduation episode. It was like a totally different show. I mean, it just yeah. felt the set and every and just I mean, obviously, you guys had aged and, you know, you, there weren't parents running around everywhere. It was, it was different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. tell us then a little bit about the decision to come back and do um, a few episodes of Girl Meets World. What did you have to think about it? Was it an immediate yes? Like what was the process for you? Yeah, no, I um, I mean, of course, I was humbled and flattered when they asked and um, I wasn't sure it wasn't um, it wasn't like a no or a yes right away. I was just thinking about it. And of course, Michael was like, let's go to dinner. And because I was in L.A. And so, you know, we went out to dinner and he again said some very nice things and said, we never should have let you go. You should, we should have kept you on the show. All this stuff, which is really nice. Really, truly they should know, have. nice. They and should have. Absolutely though. true. They should have. <laughs> yes. It was very kind. And, um, you know, he, I, I just said, look, you know, I tell me about what you're planning to do with the character. And he told me about the character of Farkle and told me how great Corey was. And, um, you know, just, I thought this could be really be cool. And this was before I was an actual dad in real life, but I knew that I wanted to be a dad. And, I thought, how great would this be eventually to be able to show, you know, hopefully my kid and and show him season one of Boy Meets World, which I can't wait to. He's going to get a kick out of that. And it's going to be a long time before I let him watch One Tree Hill or Zodiac. So that's, you know, <laughs> thank goodness. Um, so I'll it's show him that. You're not going to start with Gone Girl? You're not just no, going to start no, with Gone Girl? No, going right to go. <laughs> no, my, my wife would not be pleased. So, um <laughs> So, you know, I can't wait for him to watch boy and, and girl. I mean, that's, it's really special to be able to have something like that. And, um, it was so much fun. I mean, Corey, God, he, what it, all of those kids were just incredibly talented and Mm -hmm. had it so much more together than I did. I mean, I just was really blown away at how smart they were and what gifted actors they were. So, um, 
really, really fun. And it was just fun to get to see you guys. I missed you. I mean, yeah. it, it really was a bummer. I mean, I felt like anytime I see you guys, I sort of feel like I'm 12 again, but um, <laughs> we had this really kind of formative experience. And of course it went on for you all, but um, you know, I did, I did miss you guys. And so I feel like I share that with you and, and, and even if it is just for a year. And so it's always fun to get together and, and have that, that bond, you know, just seeing us all together. I literally feel like, no, I feel like we, no time it's has passed great. <laughs> and I just want to keep, I want to keep the feeling like I want to yeah. do it all the time. We can. Um, I have a, I have a, an acting question for you from, from an acting standpoint as a young actor, yeah. did you feel more connected to almost home and the Torkelsons or to boy meets world? Um, I, <sighs> Gosh, that's a tough question, Will. I, I mean, I felt connected to them for different reasons. I felt connected to the Torkelsons because I was playing a Southern kid. So, and I was a Southern kid. So, you know, there was no hiding the accent. Um, but the Torkelsons was a single mom and it was a very different family dynamic than what I had. Um, and I think, you know, by the time I was playing Minkus, I was 12. And there's a, there's a, there's a lot of growing up that happens between nine and 12. And so I felt much more aware and understanding of a lot more things. And so, you know, I was processing things differently, really thinking about Minkus as a character. Uh, yeah. Whereas I feel like with the Torkelsons, a lot of it was probably just a heightened version of me with, again, with fake glasses. I always had fake glasses, whatever <laughs> show I did. I never wore glasses. So, you know, that was always um, amazing. Fake. But um, so you were you the know, reverse I, Clark Kent, the reverse Clark Kent. <laughs> exactly. always. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, they made me wear them for every run through. It was like I had to have them on and like I would get headaches because the lights would like shoot oh, the, the, the light into my eyes. And like by no. the end of a run through, I'd like, you know, be taking two Advil and like, you know, going <laughs> home back to the Oakwood. But um, anyway, so great question. But I, I, I think just by the time I got to play Minkus, I was really thinking about it more from an acting standpoint of this is a character. I mean, you guys knew me. I, 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 I shared traits with him, but he, I'm not Minkus and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And um, so I really enjoyed getting in his skin and figuring out like that tight posture. And, you mm -hmm. know, he speaks with a very rhythmic and punching and that's not really me. So it was really fun to get to do that. Like I loved doing that. Yeah. Do you have any specific favorite stories from your time on Boy Meets World? Like a favorite moment, a favorite behind the scenes memory? Uh, I have so many. I mean, I think uh, fil every filming every episode was really fun. Um, the the episode where Minkus um, gets drunk on YooHoo because he gets the math problem wrong and is like, you know, that's stumbles right. I into forgot the about that. Oh man, yeah. I forgot about that. I, mean, that, I, I can't that wait was, to see that. That was like an incredible. Oh, and that was a roller coaster because that was another one where Michael wasn't thrilled with where it was after the first run through, and and it was a lot of working and reworking to get it right. And then it it when we got it in front of the audience, luckily it 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 worked. Um, so that was really fun. Um, and then you know off camera, I just remember the times we all got to hang out as kids was just a blast. I remember like Ryder, I think we went on a trip. You and Ben and I went. We went like snow skiing or something. And oh, you were on this? Yes, the snow yeah. Trip. And you yeah. went like, did you like bungee jump or I something? Bungee and jumped, I was yeah. like, oh, jeez. <laughs> I mean, and it was really growing up for me because I didn't yeah. have siblings. I didn't have older siblings, and so I really viewed you guys as like sort of older yeah. brothers in a way, really turning me yeah. on to things that I I was not thinking about bungee jumping in any sense of the any <laughs> sense of the world. You shouldn't have been. <laughs> Did you bungee Ryder jump, Lee? No, of course not. No. Did you no. ski, Lee? Could yeah, you? Ski no, I love to ski. Yeah, I love okay, to ski. Cool. So we did that. And then, uh, Danielle, I have a, a really weird memory of you and I like on a bus going to, I think they shut Disneyland down or something. Yes. And For the holidays? You and I were like in our own little world. I remember we were sitting on the bus, like playing this game that we had come up with where we just looked at each other and we had to guess the word that the other person was thinking. <laughs> and so I would say like rabbit and you would be like, yes, you got it. it was rabbit. You guys were like, testing your psychic powers. It was like, what? I mean, you know, just Listen. stupid, stupid 12 year old stuff, but we were having so much fun. That must know? have been the holiday at Disneyland. Yes. Because yeah. uh, for every holiday season, they uh, close down Disneyland after 5 PM and open it up for just Disney employees. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it, be yeah. it becomes an amazing season and they would bus us down. Yep. So our entire cr cast and crew would get to go down in a bus. It was like yeah. uh, one of my favorite days of every yes. year. Oh, one yes. of the best perks fun. of working for Disney. It was so much fun. 
Yeah, uh, that you know was what I fun. remember, Lee, was that we would always play football and basketball out. Oh, that's uh, right. And then the thing that's really funny is we did a, a press day recently, and Entertainment Tonight pulled up footage they have oh, of no. all of us actually yes. playing. But it is, it's all of us actually playing. And the funny, the funniest part was there's like five of us out there, four of us out there playing basketball. Yeah. We play for a good minute, minute and a half, and no one makes a basket. No, of oh, course not. Horrible. No. <laughs> no. They eventually so just funny. started shooting you guys with cutting <laughs> yeah. the basket, they like the hoop, the basket out of out. the shot so that it <laughs> so just, we didn't know if you guys were making it. <laughs> yeah. Horrible. This is, why, this is why we're actors. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you we, I want to talk to you about your development uh, as an actor post Boy Meets World. Like, because you went on to do more dramatic Amazing stuff, stuff yeah. and then, of course, you, you know, if you think about the, uh, you know, the spectrum from Boy Meets World to David Fincher films, uh, that's pretty wide and you fit into both. So I, I'm curious, like, when did you start to realize the difference, like the different styles of acting or because up until until, until Boy Meets World, I'm assuming yeah. you had only done sitcoms. Yes, so how did that yeah. happen? How did you grow as an actor post Boy Meets World? Um, you know, it's it's interesting. When I came back to North Carolina, I kept, you know, I was back in school, but I kept auditioning for things. And this was in the 90s when I think I heard you talk about this with Rusty, like all the TV movies were in vogue, you know, in yep. the 90s. And so that was what a lot of what was coming to North Carolina at the time. So yes. I started getting hired to play these like battered and abused kids in these sad <laughs> 90s oh. TV movies, um, right, but it very was special movie of the week, very special yeah. movie of the week yes. with like, you know, Judith Light and Lindsay Wagner and Christopher Reeve and really, you know, just yes, but and wow. and it was, of course, corny and, and probably terrible, but it was my first taste of like doing dramatic stuff and not doing sitcom stuff. And I really got to see like the difference in, you know, between what I had done on the sitcoms and, and what was going on there. Um, so that was sort of my first introduction to it. Um, and you know, I, I went on to college, I went to Wake Forest and I did theater. I didn't study theater, but I, I participated in theater at Wake Forest and got to do Midsummer Night's Dream and really got to wow. really have more of a real train. Cause I'd never had training. So I, that was really my first taste of like really studying, um, you know, Shakespeare and all of that. And so that, that really so cool. helped me out a lot and just gave me a lot of good life experience too, right. as, as you know, I'm sure you all know it, it's important to have that aspect as well. Um, what did you study? What did you major in? I studied English. I was an English major. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no math, no math. For no, me. But, no. Um, so all of that, I think helped. And, and, you know, really when, when I was fortunate enough to book One Tree Hill, um, that, that really, you know, a 10 year show, you're, you're, you get comfortable with drama and I got to mix in comedy as well, but the Fincher movies came up during that period. And, uh, just, I just felt so grateful. They're small parts, but just to even have that time with him and um, work with incredible actors like that was just mind blowing. And I, yeah, I'm really grateful for every aspect of of what I've been able to to do. It's just been from Boy Meets World to all of this, the different experiences yeah. just teach you so much. And it's, it's incredible. Did right, David, we talk fin about Fincher for did a David Fincher <laughs> talk to you about your work on Boy Meets World? Does David Fincher <laughs> Is that why he know goes? of Boy Meets World? He was I mean, a Minkus he, fan, wasn't he? He must know. I, we didn't specifically talk about it, but <laughs> David Fincher is a fan of actors. He loves actors and he loves T making unconventional choices, taking from someone, you know, like a Neil Patrick Harris and putting him in Gone Girl. And, and right. he really, you know, values actors and believes that that they can do more than whatever they've been pegged, you know, in a TV show. And thank God that someone like him exists, because as you all know, that's what we're all fighting most of the time after we've done something like that. But he so. is also notorious <laughs> for like... 150 takes he's one yeah. of those kinds of guys right do you have like a, a a great fincher like long night story yeah well of course my very first shot in zodiac it's the opening of the movie to zodiac i i run up to the car and there's a girl driving the car and i lean my head in the window and i say something like i don't know where have you what's taking you so long or you're late or something and we shot it 76 times and oh, 
it oh. literally was the most deflating thing. I'm walking back, resetting every time and they're backing the car up and they're pulling it back in. And I'm, you know, and every, and I think it was, um, Ryder, you, I, you might appreciate this. I think it was the first film that was fully shot on a red camera on like fully yes. digital. Yes. And yes. so that was an interesting thing too, because we would do all these takes and then I would hear him say delete. And as an yes, actor, he deleted them in front of the yeah, actors. He That's would what delete them and <gasps> it would of course crush my yes. soul because I'm like, what if I don't, get it as good the next time. Maybe we should hang on to it. You know? <laughs> That's what I heard. Delete them yes. later. Yeah. Um, no, he would call out which scenes, which cut, which uh, takes, takes to delete. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. do it in front of the actors. Yeah. And, and I so, heard it was like the craziest thing for people to get used to. It's like, oh, wait a yeah. minute. I mean, 74 didn't work, but 75 was great. Oh. I, I went back to my chair after that first night and was sitting in my chair, kind of dejected. And a, and a PA walked up and was like, Hey, don't feel bad. Mark Ruffalo was like 63 and yeah. Robert Downey Jr. was like 72. You know, it's yeah, it, it's yeah. just the way that it is. And yeah. once I realized that, I was like, okay. Yeah, he um, really believes in actors yeah. getting beyond like out of their head. Like, yes. And yeah. he believes that you just have to say it so many times that you're yes. not even aware of what you're saying. He, like that's his sort of version of getting actors to be as present as possible. But I can imagine yeah. it must be so difficult if you don't know that going in it oh, is man. yeah and i i actually responded to it well because i think coming from the child actor background where it mm -hmm. is often drilled in our heads that was sort of a crutch for me and so for yeah. me i actually really appreciated it because sure. it broke down a lot of that um right. and i know some actors don't love it as much but it worked it worked for me so that's so cool <laughs> well and you had to rely on minkus uh, to you know. do all of your Fincher stuff. Like, what would Minkus have done here? <laughs> I get that. Yeah, well, no, it's a check deal. <laughs> Lee, we are so happy you joined us for this episode. Where uh, can we find you now? What are you working on now? Just give us any sort of update and where people can find you. Yeah, you can, um, you can, all the uh, grandmothers and grandfathers listening can find me on Facebook oh, at good. Lenora's Official. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I do have, um, I do have a, like a private Instagram that's just for family and friends, uh, which I would, you can put that in our chat. Welcome you all to, um, but you know, I'm an old fashioned guy. I just, nobody cares about me eating a sandwich or whatever. So I just keep all that stuff private, but, Amen. um, you know, but yeah, I'm there on Facebook and, um, professionally and personally, I'm good. I'm, I'm so lucky to have found just the most wonderful person, my wife, Andrea, and we're so blessed to have our son and my parents are still healthy, thankfully. And, and, um, you know, things are good. So it's, it's, thank you for having me. It's wonderful to see you guys. Thanks for, um, I mean, I don't know if we're saying goodbye yet, but, but thanks for being so special to me and always being so welcoming, uh, over the years. I mean, you are, you are a forever family member of yeah. us. And, um, I really, I, I can't believe that you, that all of our memories were just in that one season because I feel like I have so many memories so with many. you and yeah. I wish, I wish we did have a full seven years of them. Um, but, uh, and should have, and we should have, I'm we sorry. Abs we you're right. Have. We should have, it should have, well, it should have been that way. Boy, boy meets retirement home. It's coming. <laughs> 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 never I, say I, never. Oh, I want you to take the roles. I can't do 76 <laughs> takes of the Feeny Call. I can't do 76 <laughs> takes of the Feeny Call. Can't do it. Uh, well, maybe, maybe Fincher will direct and you'll change your mind. Well, we'll yes. I would do it for that. I would do it for that. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you again for joining us for this. We love you so much. And please give our love to your family, Andrea, your son, and your mom and dad. I, yes, I will. Just, same, same to you all. And I know my mom would be mad at me if I don't say, please tell them hello from my mom and dad as well. Because, of course. I yeah, will. All, no, of our, all of our parents were close. Yeah. Yes. No, they'll, they'll be very excited and, and they're, they're proud of all of you. So, mm. yeah. All right. Well, we love all you. Right. Great to see you. Lee. Love you guys. Love okay. you. Yeah. Thank love you. 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 Thanks. <laughs> Bye-bye. I mean, how is it possible that we just, <sighs> it feels like no time has passed. He's amazing. Isn't yeah. he great? Yeah. It was so great to, I mean, I first connected with him when we did Girl Meets World. I ended up directing a couple episodes with him in it. And it was just so much fun to be 
adults together yeah. <laughs> and to talk about what we do. And, you know, he's, 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 he's truly an actor's actor. Like mm-hmm. he's one of those people. He's, that's why I wanted to ask him about acting is because he went from nailing the sitcom performance at 12, yeah. like yeah. being above and beyond anybody. And then, you know, going on to do such great work um, and, and such wide, you know, varied work um, stylistically. And he, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. Oh, it's just such a great but guy. That's, that's the thing when you're that good, that young, and yeah. then you, decide to study the craft it's like man yes. how the sky's the limit at that point because yeah. you're yeah. just so good when you start yeah. uh amazing yeah i uh i, I can't believe it I, rem- I also had a very similar experience right or working with him on girl meets world like just looking at each other and being like i can't believe we're here like we're adults we're just adults yeah. together and and yeah. he's right lee and i spent a lot of time together um we were, you know, yeah. You guys were kind of inseparable on the set, if we I were. remember. Yeah, yeah. We were inseparable. We were, we were the youngest, um, and uh, we were, we were very close. I think, I think, um, even though Orange County is a long way away from North Carolina, there were a lot of like, there were still a lot of similarities. I sure. think we both felt just kind of out of our element a little bit, yeah. um. And so, yeah, we were very close. And then being together with him on Girl Meets World was amazing. And I think we exchanged information. We were like, oh, we should get together. He wasn't living far from me in L.A. when he was living in L.A. And then, you know, it just being an adult kind of sucks sometimes and you yeah. you lose contact. So I want to get all of his information so that um, we can actually well, get together. Well, he's on MySpace. So you can go, <laughs> you can go pick him up there. Just I remember talk. being very happy to to discover that he had no bitterness. Yeah. You know, that he is not carrying around this like because it could so easily drive somebody crazy to be known as Minkus your entire life. And then also to only have done one season. And, you know, that that sense of like you described, like, did I what did they do wrong yeah. when he finds out he's not coming back for the second season? And for him to rebound from that, be so confident, healthy and to put it into such a healthy perspective. Um, and I remember when we when we reconnected on Girl Meets World. I was so appreciative of that because I was always worried. You know, I remember sure. being like, what What happened to Lee? Does Lee, you know, does Lee hate us all? Yeah. Does Lee think, yeah. you know, does he resent this time on this show? Um, and to well, find out that, that from other that's guests. not the case. We've heard that from other guests that have like, that were let go or something where they, it bothered them for years and years and years. They carried it with them. Well, think about um, how different it would be now if we had cell phones. Back then, yeah. there, we didn't have an easy way of being like, no. Hey man, what happened? Where are you? We didn't know. Like it was just, no. we thought we were going to see him in a few months and then he didn't return for season two. And then it was just like, okay, I guess he's just out of our lives. Like yeah. it was, it's just but it's weird. Also, it's, it's a really bizarre kind of unspoken reminder that we could go at any time. <laughs> All of us. It was, no, so no, what I meant, scary. I meant, no, what I meant as actors on the show. Like, oh, you're but also we show. could die at no, any that was, time. That's not what I meant. Thank you very much. I meant that we were, Boy we were saw. lucky, lucky to be on Boy Meets World. <laughs> and then it was like, we saw it with Lee and then we yeah. saw it with Tony Quinn. And then we saw, yeah. there's a number of times where it was just like, you think you're doing this and you're kicking butt and you're having a great time. And then you get a phone call. Hey, you're not on the show anymore. Yeah. And so it was, that was, we never really. That's a pretty intense environment, guys. Yeah. I like know. We, we, we take that for granted now, but that is a weird thing. This, you know, sort of Hunger Games quality of, of uh, well, our yeah. being on a TV show. Like we probably, sh- you know, that, that. Yeah, and he I was better than is. us. He was a much, but I'll only speak for myself. He was a much better actor than I was yes. when we were kids. A much it's better definitely actor. Definitely better than so, me. There was no reason for him to go other than he went like for whether it was political, whether it was ABC, whether it was money, whatever it was. Hey, thanks. You were awesome. Bye. And I'm not sure we ever as kids, especially ever discussed that where it's like, wow, he was here and now he's not. And that could happen to any of us at any time. Well, I I think we discussed it and I think we were scared of it, but we also felt like we could we could avoid it by, you know, doing our job and not messing up. And that kind of pressure is really intense. I mean, that's the pressure that we internalized. And in retrospect, you know, as a healthy grown, I think grownups probably do this, too, on TV shows. Uh, But I I think in particular on our show, there was a fear of being fired constantly. I mean, that was... That was and that was an all pervasive feeling. Um, Maybe until that, like the fifth or by, by uh, you know, like fifth, sixth season, we knew we weren't going. I mean, they weren't going to fire Sean in season five. Topanga right. wasn't going anywhere. Certainly in for the five. first couple of years, though. You, yeah, like you, the first it was, couple of yeah. years. You had, well, you just I, I, didn't I, I, I mean, I, I, I think I agree with you in principle in general, but we also renegotiated contracts at times. Yeah. And yeah, I remember being too. scared and I remember feeling too. like yep. and I also wanted off, off the show at a certain point, And I remember yeah. being wooed back. And so there was always this, you know, this 
this pressure um, that it was intense because there was a lot yeah. of um, a lot of power on the line, money and fame and um, yeah, the sense of the self of worth day. and yeah. and will I yeah, ever work again if I leave this show or yeah, yeah. it's uh, yeah wow. Well, well, that was a fun way to end that episode. Sorry. <laughs> I love Lee. I'm so glad he was here. That was really great. I can't wait to jump into recapping the episode Killer Bees. It is number 105, directed by David Trainer. Um, we're going to get into that next. Um, but this was really fun. And uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Pod Meets World Show. And you can email us, podmeetsworldshow at gmail.com. And then we got merch. Merch. It's uh, lots of shirts. We're going to do a David Fincher shirt. We're probably going to do a shirt about uh, holding the plane for Minkus. Hold the plane for Minkus. We're just going to have that shirt. We're going to have so many shirts. But you know what? You know what? Somebody suggested, and I think it's a really good idea, is mugs. Oh, I would like a a shirt with mugs on it. Great idea. Is that not? Did I misunderstand? I misunderstood. You misunder- yeah, you misunderstood. Okay, that part. sorry, my bad. Actually, the reverse is probably true. It's going to be a, a mug, mug with, with too much with shirts, shirts on, on it. it. So. <laughs> all right, it's my turn. We love you all. Pod dismissed. Pod Meets World is an iHeart podcast produced and hosted by Danielle Fischel, Will Friedle, and Ryder Strong. Executive producers Jensen Carp and Amy Sugarman. Executive in charge of production Daniel Romo. Producer and editor Tara Sudbach. Producer Lorraine Burez. Engineer and Boy Meets World superfan Easton Allen. Our theme song is by Kyle Morton of Typhoon. Follow us on Instagram at Pod Meets World Show or email us at Pod Meets World Show at gmail.com.